If you are awaiting a finding of clear and present danger, then I can only say that the danger has never been more clear and its presence has never been more imminent. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. It conducts the Cold War in short. With a wartime discipline, no democracy would ever hope or wish to match. I am not asking your newspapers to support an administration, but I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. Truer words were never more fitting for what is going on in the political arena at this time, ladies and gentlemen. Holy Toledo. Um, uh, the big news tonight, the Twitter sphere, social media has blown up because there was a clarification made. And, and as soon as I saw it, I thought for just a minute, Sidney Powell has never claimed to be Trump's attorney. She has never claimed to be on the Trump campaign's legal team. She has always said, uh, at least my understanding, was when she spoke, she said, we the people, the American people, we have a right to know. So the clarification was made tonight that Sidney Powell is acting on her own. She is not part of the Trump team. And I think uh, uh, maybe the conflict between Tucker Carlson and what's going on there in some of the media may have something to do with that. I don't know. And personally, I don't care because I don't think Sidney Powell is going to stop doing what she's doing. Um, and conveniently, she was locked out of her Twitter account for 12 hours when the announcement was posted on Twitter. Uh, thank you to General Michael Flynn for alerting everybody to what was going on. Um, I'm going to get to the clips that I have on the election fraud. This is part 35. Welcome to Alliday Mobile Media. Of course, today is the day John F. Kennedy was executed in Dallas, Texas, and the formal announcement of his death was made November 23rd, 1963. But today was the day he was shot, executed in Dallas, Texas in the motorcade. Um, conspiracy theories abound on that, and I'm not even going to touch on that. I'm just going to play a couple of his speeches. I'll close out with one. Uh, but what he said there in the beginning that I opened with, that speech was given two weeks before he was executed. So I will leave it at that. I will leave it here, and I will get, get to the clips, and then we'll talk just a little bit more about the voter hoax, the voter fraud, the voter whatever you want to call it. Governors, governors need to be able to get funding when they dispo when they dis they need to uh, and, and bring, bring their National Guard into play. The National Guards are going to have to play this. It costs a lot of money. And governors need that paid for. We talked a lot about with the governors about what the immediate needs are. I'm going to, we're going to impose the, we're going to enforce the, excuse me, employ the Defense uh, Reconstructive Act to be able to go out there and dictate companies build and do following things. We need much more testing. We need much more masking. We need more, we need gloves. I asked them each to go and I asked the National Governor Association through the Governor Cuomo and the ones on the line to let us know what their shortages are, what they anticipate. 
Dobie from Texas. How can we stop or slow down the city slash county political corruption? Here's the story. The more power is concentrated in hands of people, the more corruption you will have. That is about as much a rule as apples falling from trees will hit the ground unless something stops them on the way because gravity does its work. This is why I have said so often the the question that reveals to me whether I'm talking to somebody who has wisdom or not is do they believe that human nature is basically good? If you do, then it's almost impossible to come up with anything wise. The only reason you would trust people with massive amounts of power is if you believe that they will use it for the benefit of others and not themselves. I don't believe that. I'm not cynical. There are people with power who will use it solely for the benefit of others. But the great majority of people, given a lot of power, it will be corrupting. Power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. That is a very famous, uh, very famous statement by Lord Acton. That is the person uh, who, uh, who said it a long time ago. Power corrupts because people have it, they'll use it, they'll benefit themselves, their friends, their family, and the, therefore, the founders of the United States founded the only country ever founded on the belief that government must be limited because they knew human nature and they knew don't give these people a lot of power. The individual should have as much power as possible. And the opposite of those values are what we call left-wing values. Leftist values do not believe that the individual should have power. They believe the state should have power. But I trust the individual to do better than the state. So the answer to your question of minimizing corruption is minimizing power in people's hands. Trials take time. Putting on evidence takes time. This is basically an opening statement so the American people can understand what the networks have been hiding. The new questions stem from taped remarks of Biden during an April campaign appearance in New Hampshire. I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. Went back to law school and, in fact, ended up in the top half of my class. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only 123 credits. Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class that he does not have three degrees from college, and that he was not named outstanding political science student in college. Newsweek says Biden actually went to school on a half scholarship, ended up near the bottom of his class, and won only one degree, not three. Joe Biden ranked 76th in a class of 85 at the University of Secur Syracuse Law School. I mean, this guy comes off this whole thing as a flyweight. Now Biden says Newsweek is right. His memory had failed him. Joe My first trip to China as a young man, meeting with Deng Xiaoping in 1979, in April of 79. I was privileged to be with what I guess I'm now part of a group of very senior senators at that time. I think we were the first delegation to meet after normalization. With, As a young member of the Foreign Relations Committee, I wrote and I said, and I believe then what I believe now, that a rising China is a positive, positive development not only for China, but for America and the world. Last night in a segment about voter fraud and investigations into it, we told you about Sidney Powell, the former federal prosecutor, and her claim that roughly 7 million votes were secretly changed on election night by vote rigged vote counting software. Well, in the last 24 hours since we did that, we've heard from a lot of people about that segment, including people in the White House and people close to the president. Like us, they have concluded that this election was not fair. Like us, they are willing to believe any explanation for what happened. Like us, they have not seen a single piece of evidence showing that software changed votes. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. It might have happened. 
it means they haven't seen any evidence that it happened. And by they, we are including other members of Donald Trump's own legal team. They have not seen Powell's evidence either. No testimony from employees inside the software companies, no damning internal documents, no copies of the software itself. So that's where we are. Sidney Powell came on Fox this morning and suggested we may not have to wait much longer. I fully expect, she says, that we will be able to prove all of it in a court within the next two weeks. Well, as far as we're concerned, that is great news. If Sidney Powell can prove the technology company switched millions of votes and stole a presidential election, she will have almost single-handedly uncovered the greatest crime in the history of this country, and no one will be more grateful for that than us. On the American people, because if we let them do it again, if we let them do it now, they'll do it four years from now. They'll do it again and again and again. We will lose our country. We will lose our democracy. But what they do not realize is that we are here and we will stand up and fight every single one of you. We are in this for the long haul. We are not going to roll over and allow our country to be taken away from us. We're not going to allow our country to be stolen away from us. What they thought is they thought we didn't exist. But if you look around, you see the person next to you, and I see the people all the way back there today, guess what, guys? We do indeed exist. We exist. We exist. Donald Trump didn't need dead people voting for him because he had every single one of you. Every single one of you. This election, the, the stakes cannot be overstated. We are in a battle for our country's foundational values. We are again at that point that Reagan once talked about it. We are in a time of choosing where we must decide what type of nation we will be. Will we be a nation of lawlessness and open borders or will we be a nation of law and order, a nation where the American people are put first, where we are still able to say, God bless America. That is the country I want to live in. That is the country that I love. That is the country that I adore. And that is the country that we are out here today to fight for, to protect, and to defend. And we will win. We will win. They think they've got us going. They think they've got us down. But what they have under underestimated in this fight is the heart and dedication and the love for our country we have. America is the greatest nation in the world, but it is made great by the continued activism, the continued work and perseverance of patriots like yourself and what they realize that we are not taking any off days. The fight is just beginning, and we are in the game for the long haul. We will make America great again. We will keep America great. And Donald Trump will be the president of these United States for four more years. Thank you. Lobbyists aren't bad people. Special interest groups are not bad people. But guess what? They're corrosive. People who accept the money from them aren't bad people. But it's human nature. You go out, Lynn, and bundle $250,000 for me, all legal, and then you call me after I'm elected and say, Joe, I'd like to come and talk to you about something. <laughs> you didn't buy me, but it's human nature. You helped me. I'm going to say, sure, Lynn, come on in. Just like, by the way, if I turn around and I'm elected President of the United States of America, and you call me and say, Joe, I want to come and see you, I'm going to see you. You helped me. System in my opinion, have way too much power to control the internal features and settings of the system. Just reading the Dominion Manual, Watkins says he understands the system enough to devise an alarming number of ways to alter vote counts across an entire precinct using Dominion. I was looking at this manual with the mindset of a penetration tester. An administrator would have the ability to delete ballots, reset counts, delete entire batches, etc. There's a lot of things that they can do. Watkins notes, while there are legitimate reasons for such controls, there's no mention as to whether there's a way to track or hold users accountable for deleting or altering ballots. Dominion will train between two to six workers per county who are appointed by the county to undergo election systems training. These two to six workers are trusted to not tamper with the final tabulation and counts while transferring data between the ICC, which is the image cast central tabulation software, and the county. So this transfer process is literally just dragging some folders on a Windows computer onto a flash drive, then physically handling 
handing the flash drive to the county. What I want to know is, during this handoff, are these people being watched by auditors or to make sure this flash drive isn't switched out for something else? Are, are these folders being dragged correctly onto the flash drive? Has the data been altered before or after it's been handed off? This is where the security problem magnifies. Do you trust the worker who logs into the tabulation mach machine to drag the correct votes onto the flash drive? Are they dragging all the votes? Theoretically, you could sw swap the flash drive for a different flash drive. There's a uh, no accountability there. And then once the county commissioner or whoever uh, accepts that flash drive gets the flash drive, do you trust them to not go in and edit the contents before they report it? As Georgia underwent its recount two weeks after Election Day, flash drives were found with uncounted ballots on them. Over 2,700 votes had been forgotten in the initial count. 1,500 of those votes were for Donald Trump, 1,100 for Biden. So another issue is the keys. The keys to the machine are digital devices. Uh, they, it's unclear what the device is. It might be like an RFID device or USB or, or something. But it is clear that it's a digital device that holds some kind of cryptographic key on it. If you lose this physical key to the machine, then you lose absolute security of the entire precinct. Say Philadelphia was storing these keys in a warehouse and they they were robbed and the only thing stolen were these keys and a laptop, then you should consider their entire election to be illegitimate because they have lost the physical security of the system. That's just what happened in Philadelphia one month before election day. Philadelphia police are investigating after somebody broke into an election machine warehouse and stole a laptop and a USB drive. The theft happened last night at the warehouse on the 3500 block of Scotts Lane in East Falls. Officials were quick to declare this theft had nothing to do with the election and was not malicious at all. An odd declaration. You don't catch the criminal, but you decide you know their motive? Interesting judicial logic, Philadelphia. Meanwhile, local reporter posted this video on social media where he's seen walking around that same warehouse without being noticed. Whoever stole those keys in, in Philadelphia has admin access. Do you trust a random thief who has administrative access to the voting machine? They could have theoretically been able to make as many keys as they want for Philadelphia. On election night, Donald Trump led Joe Biden by 800,000 votes, major precincts reporting. In the dead of night, that lead disappeared. Biden overtook Trump and took the whole state of Pennsylvania by 60,000 votes. That 60,000 vote bump came from the very Philadelphia county in which the drive and laptop had been stolen. Watkins' list of concerns about Dominion's vulnerabilities went on. Watkins found it strange that algorithms for ballots with just one candidate on it, called an undervote, were so complicated. And it is unclear what happens to these ballots. The computer may or may not throw out your vote. Another concern, right after the 2018 midterms, Pennsylvania made a custom request. They requested Dominion change the system to read a straight Republican or straight Democrat ballot, but oddly, read an individual candidate separately from the rest of the straight ticket choices below. I looked at the font they're using, and it's, uh, it's part of the Arial family of fonts, A-R-I-A-L, which is a sans serif font. And with this font family, a capital I and a lowercase l are nearly indistinguishable on a piece of paper. The person who designs the ballot and the race could theoretically put uh, Donald Trump in the Republican Party, not the Republican Party. And that would be a capital I instead of the L. And then everybody else on the Republican Party would just be in the normal Republican Party. In that situation, if you vote just straight party for the Republicans, then Trump would not get a vote. And there are a lot of, I've been hearing a lot of issues of uh, Trump performing poorly in heavily uh, Republican uh, areas. Next, Watkins says, the machines are not supposed to connect to the internet, but there don't seem to be physical safeguards against connecting to internet through the store-bought laptops. If these computers, if even one of these computers was connected to the internet, like, if one election worker said, oh, I'm going to look at TikTok videos for the next hour for my break, 
then the entire precinct is compromised. But even these concerns were minor compared to what Watkins shared with us next. Dominion's algorithm for handling an anomaly, that is, a stray mark or bleed through from a Sharpie pen. So this is, this is the big one that I'm most concerned about. If the scanning system detects any anomaly on your ballot, then you are not counted. What Watkins reveals next explains one of the strangest mysteries of the 2020 election. We'll be right back. Every day your body's engaged in a microscopic battle. And it's your immune system's job to detect, deflect, and destroy these invaders and to keep you healthy. One daily dose of Texas Superfood is loaded with the vitamins and minerals and nutrients from 55 raw fruits and vegetables. So your best defense these days is a healthy immune system. And Texas Superfood can help you get it. So if you can't, won't, or don't eat all your fruits and vegetables every day, Texas Superfood is made for you. Dogs in America are experiencing a health crisis, and the cause may be one specific thing in their diet. It's in hundreds of dog foods, and you may have already noticed warning signs like digestive problems, itching, bad breath, and odors, but the long-term impact can be far worse. Fortunately, world-famous veterinarian Gary Richter has a new trick to improve your dog's food at home without switching brands. To learn how to help your dog live a long, healthy life, just visit CheckYourDogFood.com. That's CheckYourDogFood.com. Here's an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. Diabetics understand all too well the pain of pricking your fingers. But now, by wearing a small remote device called a Continuous Glucose Monitor, or CGM, you can immediately reduce your pain. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn about this groundbreaking new CGM technology. And if you have Medicare, you can get a new CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Shipping is free, and we'll even bill your insurance company for you. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn how you can get your own continuous glucose monitor or CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Ron Watkins' analysis of Dominion voting systems is through a singular lens, that of an infiltration hacker. Through that lens, the machines are disastrously vulnerable. But as a systems analyst, the biggest red flag about Dominion was its algorithm where ballots with anomalies, bleed-throughs or stray marks, are set aside and not counted. What happens when your vote is not counted due to an anomaly, then a scan of your ballot gets saved into a folder on the ICC, the ImageCast central tabulation system. This allows for those two to six people who are trained by Dominion to go through the folder of anomalies and either delete or verify each of the ballots inside the folder. I believe it's called vote education adjudication. These workers can theoretically see which candidates have been marked as votes on these anomalous ballots before they are verified and officially cast. So it's possible they could, in theory, handpick a certain party's vote to be verified while throwing out all the others. But it's the next point that stuns Watkins most. The biggest issue here is that the system for detecting anomalies can be set up by altering gamma settings on the scanner so that every ballot has an anomaly. This, in effect, when a single county in Michigan switched votes from Trump to Biden, that was the difference between a Biden victory and a Trump victory. Dominion voting systems, Democrats, and the media all insist this was a one-time error. Do you believe them? I'm Chanel Rion. Don't miss this exclusive investigation Saturday and Sunday, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific.
Ladies and gentlemen, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silent, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. That is why the Athenian lawmaker told that treated a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. But I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people, confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. Remembering John F. Kennedy. Um, in the interest of time, I've uh, uh, not added five more clips, so I will push them into part 36 of the ongoing voter fraud series, and we'll put them out tomorrow morning. I'm going to leave it at there for this evening, ladies and gentlemen. In closing, as always, from Alliday Mobile Media, it is a somber evening remembering JFK. For LA Mobile Media, let's all have a great night. Let's all be safe out there, huh? One last question. John John Q?